Amen. Glory to God in the highest, yes. right? Amen. Peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Yes. That wasn't just something that happened a long time ago. It's it's an ongoing deal. Yeah. The the word of the Lord to us is always yes. yes and amen. so be it, right? Yes. What, yes. When it comes to things he's promised us, I mean he doesn't give us everything we want because we don't need everything we want. Amen. But he does find a way to give us exactly what we need and you figure if you're going to send your children out on a journey and they're going to be in jeopardy and they have a mission to accomplish and you want them to be protected and safe and you want them to have everything they would ever need on that journey while they were there then you would give them everything they would need everything they could possibly uh, have amen. to utilize. Amen? Yes. Well, our Father's no different. Yes, amen. The, the things that we could imagine we would do for our children so that they would have what they needed, how much more our Heavenly Father. Amen? Okay. So it, it brings us into just some, some basic truth. I mean, it's not rocket science. I mean, it really isn't to where we understand that our Father wants us to win. He wants us to come out on top. He wants us to be the first among equals. He wants us to uh, not have to strive and not just try to survive, but he wants us to not just win, but to rule and reign. Amen? Yes. It's, I think we've all at some point in our life experienced being on the top. But it seems like the bottom is not too far from the top at times. It's like we can go from the top to the bottom in the blink of an eye. Yeah. And, and our Father wants us to stay on the top. Amen. He wants us to stay in that place to where no matter what we think or what we can imagine, His, his thoughts and His imagination is greater. Amen. Amen. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. Amen. Amen. And to put that in full perspective, he says that he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we could ever ask or think according to the power that works within us. Amen? Amen. Say that with me. My Father, My Father can, do exceeding can do exceeding abundantly above all above I could ever ask or think according to his power that dwells in me, that dwells in me. that's working in me. That's working. Amen. Amen. So I love that because working is a present tense verb. Yes. That means it's there now. Yes. It's doing something right now. Amen. I like the right now stuff. Me too. You ever, you ever feel like you're having to wait for something to come? Isn't that fun? Don't you just love that? Well, he's saying, my power is already in you, and it's working. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. That's God. something to get focused on right there. If, you, if we can get rooted and grounded in that, then uh, it would be a very joyful day every day. Amen. Amen. To, to get that knowledge and understanding that the power's in there working. Well, what's it in there working? It's working so that our Father could do exceeding abundantly above all we could ever ask or think. Amen. Yes. Now, he tells us something very incredible that we need to get locked into. And that is, he said, I know what you have need of before you ever ask. Praise God. Thank you. Amen. Amen. So our asking is not increasing his knowledge. No. Nope. Not one bit. His actions are not going to have to wait for us to get something to his ear. He already has it figured out. He said, I know what you have need of before you ever ask, but I want you to ask. ask. If you ask, you will receive. Amen. 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 Glory. Now, in the journey that God has given us, the responsibility he has given us in that 
is qualified by him. I want you to seek and find. Yeah. Amen? Amen. I want you to knock. Because if you knock, it'll be open to you. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Uh, ask, you'll receive. <laughs> knock, you'll find. Right? Seek. Yeah. He wants us to take action based upon our belief in what he has told us. Yes. N not out of desperation. Not out of anything related to fear or worry or concern. But everything that has to do with the joy of believing. Amen? Amen. Jesus, it was the joy set before him that allowed him to endure the cross. Amen? Yes. You see, getting the framework of the communication of our Father should produce and tap into the kingdom of God who's already inside of you. And the kingdom of God that you are taking possession of. And that part, Romans 14, 17 says, is righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen? So we start looking at the things that God is telling us and the things that he's wanting us to hear and the things that he's wanting us to believe because he wants us to be fully equipped, fully knowledgeable, fully able, based upon truth, to not only win the day, but to win every day. Yes. Amen? Amen? To take possession. Yes. It, it's, it's not enough to just touch the top of the pole. Once You ever had to climb that rope and you get to the top and you got to ring the bell and you got to come back down? Well, we had to do that even in the military had to do that. But to own the pole, amen, to own it, to... To stay at the top. How many's ever been on that roller coaster ride where you're you're just so fired up about the things God's saying that all of a sudden you run out of road? And, oh. Yeah. Come on. He makes the low places high. Amen. Glory to God. And the high places are low, so that we stay on that even kill. We're not driven by emotion, or should never, ever, 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 ever be driven by emotion. Emotionalism can lie to you, and most often does. But the truth solidifies you. It strengthens you. It establishes you. Yeah. It settles you. It honors you. The truth does. Because the truth... You, you never read in the scripture where Jesus is going, yeah, because somebody got raised from the dead. <clears throat> you don't hear him freaking out and then just giving high fives or nothing because he took five loaves and two fishes and fed 5,000. You, know, you see what I'm saying is that he knew he was going to win. He knew he was the winner. He was the victor. He knew that. He understood that. Yeah. Because he understood the principles of what it was he was relating with. He understood in life he was the winner. Yes. That his father had equipped him and tooled him with everything he needed to address any and every circumstance and come out on top. Indeed. He believed it. He was taught by the Holy Ghost of God. And when Jesus was challenged, he always responded with the truth. Amen? Amen. He responded with the truth. <clears throat> it wasn't about whatever. I'll go pray about it. He knew what it was. Yeah. So we need to let that same mind be in us that was in Christ Jesus. Now, that's a difficult thing. If you're going to win, though, you have to have the same mind. Yes. You have to have the same heart. You have to have the same word, the same truth, the same everything. Because if we can learn how Jesus won, 
than the things that he did, we can do, we can do also. Amen. So at some point, we need to begin to understand that Jesus won. Now, the Father revealed that early on by saying, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit. Amen? How do you win? By a spirit. That's how you win. How do you get the victory? By a spirit. How do you maintain the victory? By a spirit. How did you get where you are in Christ? How are you going to get anywhere in Christ? By a spirit. All right, so it's not like, it's, once again, it's not rocket science. This is something that, so who do we really need to be tied to head, shoulders, neck, everything, tied into the mind of the Spirit of God? Yes. Amen. Amen. The things that God has given us in that is the thing that, the very thing that got Jesus through, it gave him the knowledge he needed to be able to win against Satan himself. <coughs> it gave him the knowledge he needed to win against the religious people of the day. It gave him the knowledge and the victory to be able to press through, to conquer, to defeat, to know when to make a stand, to know when to be tough, and know when to get your tail out of there. People don't understand it, but Jesus did some escaping. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. He sure did. He didn't just say, well, my angel's going to come and kick your butt. No. Spirit said, hey, dude, let's get out of here. Amen. Amen. Now, you wouldn't think that would be, that retreat would be an option. Or a detour would be an option. But sometimes it is. Yes. I guarantee you, if Jesus had to detour, you're going to have to detour yeah. something. If Jesus had to get out of there and escape from their midst. Yeah. Now, now, I'm going to tell you what, a lot of times, just about on a daily basis, we are surrounded by people that are not conducive to the spreading of the gospel of the kingdom. <laughs> Tim goes every day, all day long. Yes. And sometimes God will deliver you out of their midst. Yes, amen. And if he does... Be wise and try not to subject yourself to it again. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen. I've got family members. I love them. They're not interested in the kingdom. They're, they're not trying to progress and trying to yield and let and permit Christ to have preeminence in their life. Mm -hmm. I love them. And, and for the most part, they're, they're good people. But if I associated with them all the time, I would begin to think somewhat like they do. Yeah. And when you start thinking like something, you begin acting like and doing like. You start taking on the same shape, the same form, the same characteristics. And that's not who we are. No. Amen. Amen? Just because you love somebody or like somebody doesn't mean you need to subject your soul and everything to that pummeling every day. Right. Sometimes you just got to say, Lord, do I need to escape out of this thing? Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Sometimes you're making a stand and the Lord, who is faithful, will not suffer you to be tempted beyond what you're able. But will, with the temptation or the struggle that the enemy brings upon you, give you a means of escape that you may be able to bear up. Amen? Amen. Amen. When, when we think about winning, we don't think about escaping. I'm going to tell you, sometimes a good escape is a good win. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And uh, the Lord teaches us how to do that. One thing prophetically that has come out in the last couple of weeks was he wants us to win. Last week, he spoke about wanting us to win. Uh, Crystal had something the Lord had shared uh, with her uh, briefly about winning and the confirmation that he had given to me about winning. And it was really a, an incredible thing. But we, I don't think we gauge ourselves a lot of times in our life thinking 
about how much we have won, how many victories we've actually accomplished along the way, and the things we, by the grace of God, defeated, conquered, overcame. Um, I mean, when you look at who you were and now who you are, how much victory have you had? Lots. Quite a bit. Amen. Lots. Lots. Amen. I mean, Amen. when you start thinking about it, if you just actually sit down on pen and paper and started totaling these things up, you'd probably be there for weeks and weeks. Just thinking of the things God delivered you out of, the things God brought you into, the way he blessed you, the way he prospered you, the way that he satisfied you, settled you, the things that he had you escape, that he helped you escape from. He, sometimes we're locked in religion, and he helps us escape from it. Sometimes we're locked into things that are, are hindering us and holding us back. And here comes the Lord. Amen. Amen. With thought, with imagination, with that speak, the way he communicates in us. And begins to move us to a place that he wants us to be. Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. Hallelujah. The, the desire that God has for us is, is for absolute victory. It's, it's not a partial thing. He even told the children of Israel when they were coming out of um, Egypt and any place that they were had been, maybe the Assyrian captivity, Babylonian captivity, anything you can look at, he told them, do not compromise. Do not make a covenant with any that you're coming into that land. If I send you in there to possess that land, you come out of there owning it. Amen. Amen. Don't go in there and compromise. Don't go in there and say, well, you know, we'll stay. You take care of that part and I'll take care of this part. He said, no, if I send you in there to possess something, I want you coming out the winner. Amen. I want you coming out with ownership, with the authority and the power to rule over that with none that you have unequally yoked yourself with. <coughs> Amen. Amen. So it's by divine design that God brings us into the things of our life he wants us to possess. We're not shooting a Diet Dr. Pepper commercial or nothing. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's so many things in our life, like walking in love, walking in mercy, walking in goodness, kindness, gentleness, meekness, temperance. If God wants you to possess that, he wants you to possess it. Amen. He doesn't want to be a compromise. Well, I'll be nice when I'm around them, but no, that's a compromise. If you're acting one way here and another way somewhere else, it's a compromise. If you're thinking one way here and another way there, it's a compromise. It's double-mindedness makes you unstable in all of your ways. Amen? Amen. It's hard to win and maintain victory if you're unstable. You've got to be singleness of mind. And that mind being single needs to be the mind of the Spirit. Because that's the mind that God put in us. Amen? Amen. That when we get locked in and start letting the true teacher teach us, then we, we pay more attention. We, we really begin to not only listen, but we begin to hear. And when we begin to hear, the faith of God begins to move into our being to where we start believing. God, can you imagine? I mean, that we actually start believing the things that God's bringing our way. It'll transform us. Yes. We're transformed by the renewing of the mind. Amen? Amen. The oldness of the mind is what keeps us from transforming. Forming. But the spirit moves upon the oldness of mind and renews it. Mm -hmm. he, in other words, the old thoughts that were working against you, he destroys by, by your assistance because you are yielding and letting and permitting him to do it. How do you do that? You're in agreement. If you get upset and angry and harbor unforgiveness and he comes in and says, no, no. That's working against you. And you say, it, it is? He goes, yeah. And he goes, okay, what do we do? And he said, well, you need to repent. 
break that mindset. And this is the way you need to think. Mm -hmm. So you repent, break and cast down the mindset, and then take on the knowledge. We're yielding, letting, and permitting the Holy Ghost of God work in us. We would all love to be brainwashed by the Holy Ghost. Just come <laughs> in and wipe it out. Yeah. Oh. Yay! <laughs> and then write in real quickly everything we need. Amen. 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 We might be zombies for a while, yeah. but when we come out of it, we would be Holy Ghost powered. Yes. Amen. 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 Lord, we're, we're open to that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> But the divine design is little by little you take the lamp. That we are, we are creatures that God has designed to be capable of doing that. To where we are able to subdue, pull down and co conquer thoughts and imaginations and high things that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. God tells you one thing, but these thoughts come in to tell you something else. Now, we have the privilege and the honor as royalty, kings, uh, and priests of the Most High God to address those thoughts and say, no, no thoughts. You, you're you not going to be in here. You're, you're lying against the truth. God told me the truth. Yes. God told me I could lay hands on the sick and they would recover. You're trying to tell me it may or may not happen. So I'm kicking you out. There you go. Yes. And I'm going to hold fast to the truth. Amen. Amen. Because as I am rooted and grounded in that truth, that truth is in me because the word has spoke to me. And that word, when he spoke to me, brought with him the faith of God to cause all aspects of that word to become live and viable in my life. Amen. And that when I reject the lie and embrace and are rooted and grounded in that truth, then the faith of God becomes operational yeah. in me to accomplish that word on a daily basis. Amen. Amen. Once the faith of God empowers the word of God in you, you don't need faith for it no more. It's alive. Yes. It's alive. Yes. But in a good way. Amen. Amen. So living by that word is the same as living by the faith of God is the same as living by the truth of God. It's the same as living by the mind of Christ or living by the Spirit. That they all work hand in hand, but it's not something you're going to stumble onto. It's something you've got to listen and then decide, am I going to hear this or not? Don't think just because you listen you're hearing. Because a lot of times it doesn't get out of your head. It comes in this ear, go process through the mind, and goes right out that one. And then you get down the road and go, oh, what was that? What was that? Maybe we ought to put a cork in one ear. <laughs> put a little detour sign in there and say, go down into my being. But it happens. We, we have to be ready to hear. Have you ever come in out of a situation and somebody's trying to talk to you? You see their lips moving. Yeah. You can hear words. It don't mean a thing to you. Happens all the time. I, I, I go through that every day. And I'll tell people, I'll say, you're going to have to wait a second. Wait, let me get, let me get this under control here. And then I will be able to focus to hear what you're saying and doing. But we need to do ourselves that way a lot of times. A lot of times our minds want to think about something else. And the Spirit's wanting to teach us something. we got to choose which is most important. Mm. At that point, we need to shut down what the recipe is for the carrot cake that we were just, you know. Or we got to shut down what the kids are doing yeah. over in the, the, some other county or whatever else. we got to shut that down and say, no, no, I need the truth. The truth is yeah. going to make me stronger, more able, more capable, more fully uh, equipped that whatever comes my way, this equipping will cause me to win that. Now, does that mean that we should not think about the kids over somewhere else? No, it's fine. But there's a time for everything. Amen? Amen. Amen. If the Spirit of God, we have to train and discipline ourselves 
that when the Spirit of God, we know when the Spirit's dealing with us. If you don't know when the Spirit's dealing with you, maybe you need to get saved. I don't know. But that we should know when the Spirit's dealing with us to teach us something and bringing us to the knowledge of the truth. And when you do feel that and know that and realize that, you need to shut everything else down. And, and a lot of times coming into the fellowship, you, you know by the grace of God when you come in here, you're going to hear what the Spirit is saying. Yes. It's going to come from somebody, somehow, some way, and we ought to be listening and looking, where is it going to come from today? I don't know where it's coming from, but I know when it comes, I know where it's going. It's going into my spirit. Amen? I direct the word. I direct that communication of God to get into my being. And, and that's what we need to do. Because if we're going to take the actions and the operation of Christ beyond where we are now, beyond what's going on, it's going to take the, the effort on our part to subdue our flesh. To subdue our soul. Our flesh wants to do crazy things. It, it, it does. The, the flesh, according to even the scripture, lusts against the spirit. It's jealous. And the spirit, it, it, it's a different type of a lust against the flesh. But the spirit is telling the flesh, you shut up. You're trying to kill them and I'm trying to make them alive. Come on. Yes, amen. You're trying to captivate them and enslave them and I'm trying to make them free. But here's the battle. The flesh knows that when the spirit is able and yielded to by the individual, the flesh dies. Praise God. Amen. Yes. Amen. Now, it's not like you just fall over the carnal mind. Amen. The ability of the flesh and all of its desires to wrestle you to get your attention, to seize your power to seize your attention and the control that you possess, the flesh wants it. It'll fight and wrestle you to get it, but it knows that in every area that you yield and give over to the mind and the heart and the life of the spirit, in that area the flesh dies. Amen. Carnality no longer has a voice Amen. in that area of your life. Amen? Amen. You know that you've been established in the truth when the voice of the flesh is silent in that area of your life. If, if you used to wrestle with salvation, am I saved? Am I going to go to heaven one day? You might have wrestled with that for years and now you don't wrestle with it no more. The enemy don't even talk about it no more. You know why? It, it's probably because you were rooted in that truth now. Yes. Mm -hmm. The voice of the enemy cannot speak in the place that God has already established the rule of Christ. Amen. But in the areas that we find ourselves struggling with, wandering and wrestling day in and day out, maybe it's warfare, maybe it's healing, uh, maybe it's subduing sin, maybe it's being guided or directed, whatever it is, if you're wrestling and fighting in those areas, it's because we've not been established in the truth. The truth makes you free from the voice of the enemy who would lie against the truth. Yeah. So by the grace of God, when, when the things become operational in us, they're, they're set in motion by the Spirit of God to cause you to win. Amen. Amen? I remember when I first came to Christ. I'm not going to rehearse again the the stupid life I had before I came to Christ. But when I came to Christ, I always felt that the goodness of God that he had shown to me was in jeopardy. That I was going to do something. If anybody could mess it up, it would have been me. <laughs> I, I just knew there was something I was going to do that was going to mess it up. And, uh, and it was a battle. I wrestled with it probably for about three years three years and I, I'm sure I told you that I was fasting I think it was about the 21st day and God revealed his love to me I had wrestled no more Amen. about my salvation Amen. 
it wasn't that he rooted and grounded me in the truth necessarily. That the, that the, the message of salvation was already real within me and I had already received it. What was hindering me from receiving the truth was I didn't understand the love. Right, that's it. Mm. You see, when the love was revealed, everything else fell into place. Amen. I, I, I knew, I knew he had saved me and brought me into eternal life and into his family and his kingdom when I understood his love. Now, I don't mean understand like, I know everything there is to know about the love of God. It was, it was the love I wasn't trusting. When, when that love, man, I can still feel it right now. When that love, <laughs> whew, when that love became real to me and I experienced the mind of God behind that love, it settled that issue forever. Amen? Amen. It's the spirit that knows what you need to cause you to win. I didn't need to understand salvation better. I needed to yield to the love. I mean, I had great people around me my whole life. But you could be around people who think every the greatest about you. But that doesn't mean you're receiving the love. Amen? Amen. Look at some of the young people today. They're deeply loved by their parents their family and friends, everybody around them. And then you read about them ending their life. And you go, well, what, what happened? What, what went wrong? Well, obviously something was blocking them from receiving the love. And we know who that was. Yes. It was the devil. But it could be that there's things in your life that have run into a wall and it may be, just maybe, that wall is, is there. Not because you don't understand the promise of God, but maybe it's the love of God for you that you've not yet embraced that will give you the ability you need to believe somebody that loves me that much sure would have given me that. Amen? Amen. My father loved me enough to give me the power to lay hands on the sick and then recover. My father loves not only me, but he loves others that much. Of course, why would he not do that? Why would he not give you the power to lay hands on the sick and then recover? If he can do it, do you think he can do it? Yes. Then why would he not do it? You see what I'm saying? Yes. Then it becomes simple. It's like, well, of course you're going to do that. Well, of course your father's going to give you the power to cast out devils and demons and free people to, to do those things. Of course he is. Well, well why would he? Because he loves you and he can do it. Amen? Praise God. Thank you. It's, it's part of the operation of God. And it's not wrapped up in big, long religious words or big, long sermons or, or big, long uh, messages from theologians or, or anybody else. It has all to do with when you get in that relation, when you are seeking first the heart of your father, the dwelling of your father, the love of your father, you're seeking the kingdom, the peace and the joy, and that right relationship with you, that you have with him, when that's rooted in you, you you then are equipped and prepared to believe fully. Oh, I know my father's gonna add everything else to me. I know he is. Because you know him. Is there a single one of you in here that knew that you had something that would help your kids and you could give it to them and it would not diminish your supply one bit? Would you hold it back from them? No. no. There is no one in here would do it. And if you would, meet me in the office later. We need to talk. <laughs> we would never do that. We knew it was going to help them. Now, I don't, I'm not talking about supporting habits. And so that you're not helping them at all there. You're hurting them. But to have the full ability and potential to give them what they would need to win and be victorious and to be blessed and to be prosperous and then to be a blessing and prosperous and able and equipped to help others. 
And we could do that and it not take away from any, but it would actually cause it to expand and to grow greater. Yes. We would do it. And much more, much, much, much more, our Heavenly Father has done it. He's done it. Amen. Yes. Uh, I'm telling you and sharing with you what he's done. Not that if he could, then he would. I'm telling you, he could and he has. Yes. Yes. Amen. That he's already put you in possession of all things. Yes. Amen. 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 Who owns all things? Yes. Mark, who owns all things? We do. He gave them to us. Yes. All things are yours. Exactly. You are Christ's, and Christ yes. is God's. Amen. Now the scripture reveals that so we understand. Who, who rules and reigns then over all things? You do, because he gave it to you. Now if you're not ruling and reigning over all things, then you're allowing the enemy or some other force or energy to rule over that. Yeah. I mean, <coughs> Revelation came, it's been several months ago now, about all things. Yeah. And we looked at all things, and God's incorporating that knowledge now into what he wants us to understand. If you don't like what's going on in all things, then change it. You have the power. Come on. You have the authority. And you don't have to ask God. He's already said yes. And so be it. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So in the arranging of all things, one of the first things we're coming to is the mind of Christ. It gives us the knowledge that we understand. I can rule all things. All things that pertain to life and godliness in the realm of and in the regions of life that God has given me to possess, I rule in Christ in my Father's name. Amen. 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 <laughs> it's by divine design. But if I have that authority, I also have that accountability. And I have that responsibility. Now, if, if he gives... If I give Mark my car to go out here and use and drive, and then he comes back, I said, Mark, where's my car? And he goes, well, Leah come and got it. And, and well, why would Leah come and get it? I, I put you in control of it. You're accountable. You're responsible. What did you do with it? Amen? You remember the, the parable about the talents? And the one who had the one? So well, I knew I only had one, and I knew that, you know, you were a taskmaster when it comes to things like that, and I took it and buried it. I didn't want nothing to happen to it so that when you come back, I can say, hey, here it is. He said, you're wicked and evil. The Lord called him wicked and evil. Mm -hmm. He said, unprofitable. Mm -hmm. you, you should have known. I gave you authority and power to care for that. I'm also making you accountable and responsible. Now, with all of that in mind, think about the all things that's affecting your life right now. You're a priest. You're the priest. Christ made you priest and king. Royalty. We are a royal priesthood. Go back and read Exodus 19, 1 through 6, and get over into uh, 2 Peter chapter 2. We see that God has put us in that place as priest and royal royalty to be able to rule all things. Yeah. If you neglect all things, the enemy won't. Mm -hmm. You ever seen a garden neglected? You ever seen a yard neglected? You ever seen somebody pass away or move and leave the house by itself? It goes down. Keep coming back year after year. Next thing you know, the trees and the environment itself will pull it down to nothing. Yep. Just takes over. You know why? Whoever had authority and power was irresponsible. Mm -hmm. And they, they would not take action. 
The only thing that it takes for the enemy to be successful against you is for you to do nothing. Do nothing. And the only thing it takes for us to win is to do something. Amen. Yes, amen. 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 <coughs> when we step up and begin accepting to receive the things that our Father has given us, immediately we become empowered. Amen. We're empowered. I mean, how, how could you possibly be empowered to accept Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God, if you never heard about it? You're just kind of walking around not knowing anything. Then one day, you get a visitation. Hey, uh, my Father so loved you. He sent his only begotten son yes. to die for you so you could live. Yes. And if you'll call upon his name, he'll save you and deliver you. Amen. Now you're empowered. Yes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. What are you empowered to do? To believe. You're empowered to believe. What am I going to believe? I'm going to believe what I just heard. Yes. What I just heard is my father loves me. My heavenly father loves me so much. He sent his only begotten son, Jesus, to die on the cross to bear my sins, to free me, and to give me eternal life. Yes. I'm empowered in all of that now because I've heard it. Yes. And as I hear it, the message itself is communicating the elements I need to engage the faith of God that was in what he said. So that when I believe, the faith actually, by the Spirit, mates with the Word and causes the seed to produce. Yes. Amen. Amen. So that the thing I heard now becomes a living reality in my life. Yes. Where before, I may, be a, may have been dumb as a rock. Well, dumb as a tr whatever. I'm not saying rocks are dumb. <laughs> Anyways, I know, I, I, I'll get an email over that, I'm sure. <laughs> you would not believe some of the stupid things. But anyway, we may have been completely blank, but the, the work of the Spirit of God in the mind of Christ is to start filling in the blanks. Yes. Our responsibility is to pay attention. And hear. And when we hear, we begin to believe. When we begin to believe, we begin to speak. And when we begin to speak, it all starts coming together. We can ask. Jesus asked the Father to send us another comforter, and he did. Amen. Amen. He asked and received. We asked for salvation, and we received what? A bullfrog. <laughs> No. You ask for salvation, you got salvation. salvation. You believe to salvation. <clears throat> when you hear, do not harden your hearts. You would think that you would, but we do at times. The Spirit speaks something to it. It can happen right here in the service. To where God's wanting to get a message to you, and we're so caught up with, the, oh, look at the little baby or look at the little toys or look at this and, or something's happening over there and our attention's everywhere. The enemy is fighting you. The flesh is fighting you to keep you from hearing because he knows something important that we've not yet got locked into. That if we do hear it and you can hear when you least expect you're going to hear something. When you hear, then you're empowered. To believe what you heard. And when you believe what you heard. Now now everything's on the line. Because the enemy now is going to come and try to take away. What it was you heard. Because he's afraid you're going to believe it. And he knows if you believe it. It will become part of your life. And as it becomes a part of your life. And matures. His voice in that area of your life. Gets less and less and less. Until he has no voice at all. Amen. Amen. So God wants us to win. He wants us to pay attention. He wants us to, to engage it. But we need to understand we have everything 
within our being right now that it takes to win. Yeah. What are you up against? Whatever you are up against, I got good news. <laughs> the victory is at hand. Yes. Amen. 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 Your Father who loves you much more than you could ever think about loving anything or anybody has equipped you and empowered you yes. with His power in your being that's working right now. And through that working, he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you could ever ask or think. Amen. Amen. What that power moves upon is the truth. When the truth comes to you, you need to recognize the truth. Hear the truth. Believe it. And let that working power within you begin to manifest yes. the thing that God had said he would do beyond what you could ever imagine. Amen? Amen? It's not the winning that's important. It's the life that winning brings. Yes. Amen? Amen? When Jesus won, they weren't running around, we're the winner, we're the winner. No, he said, now you go. Yes. Amen? Amen? Now you go tell him. I demonstrated to you the sacrifice of life that I want you to give. That I laid my life down for you. Now I want you to go lay your life down for others. Mm -hmm. Not in the same manner of going through the crucifixion. But in the manner that I want you to deny yourself. I want you to deny yourself the right to have an opinion. I want you to deny yourself all the things that are legitimately yours. You mean it's against the law for me to do that? No. In Christ, all things are lawful for you. Amen. But not all things are beneficial for you. Amen. Amen. The truth is, all things are yours. And nothing is unlawful. But the reality is, he wants you to take that freedom and that liberty and not use it as an occasion to the flesh. Yes. But he wants you to subdue the flesh and take that life of the spirit and empower the soul with the truth. That through the unity of the spirit and the soul, your life, even your flesh, will be transformed. Praise God. Praise Amen. Amen. That, that the life that we have in the spirit, but it's ours to accept or deny. It's ours to yield to or to resist and to fight. I, I know by the difficulty in my own life that just because you hear does not mean you believe. And just because you pray and ask does not mean you're expecting to receive. Amen? Amen. That there's a more fullness to the communication of God in the life of the Spirit in our, in our being that God is quickening in this time right now. Amen. Yes. yes. He's quickening it, quickening it, making it alive to us so that we not only are observers, but we are apprehenders. Yes. We are possessors of the kingdom. That we're not just trying to get in there we're trying to get the kingdom to come, but we all actually take possession of the kingdom yes. and use the authority and the power of the kingdom for good. Amen. To subdue all of our father's enemies and make them a footstool for his feet. To bring in that same life that we received and life everlasting. A good life. Amen. So that even creation itself has to yield and say, you know what, Alice, you're a true daughter of your father. Yes, amen. He gives life and so do you. you. You have the same love and passion for all of creation that he has. And I know you do because you're laying your life down and yielding and letting Christ live through you who's empowering everything around you. Amen? Amen. Amen. Creation's waiting for us. All of creation, visible and invisible. We have very little knowledge about the invisible. But I know this much, it's there. Yes. Yeah. And I know Jesus, most of the time, spoke to the invisible. 
And guess what? It, it changed the visible. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. We're still struggling with the visible. Yes. <laughs> yes. But you know what? I, I believe the day is come. That the time is on us. If you want to win, do you want to win? Yes. If you want to win, he's going to show you how. Yes. Amen. 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 It, he'll, I believe he's going to walk us through it step by step. And that we utilize the tools we have. Ears to hear. Yes. Amen. Eyes to perceive and a heart to believe. I think that as we engage them over this month long thing that the Spirit of God I know is doing, then we're going to come out of this thing changed, transformed, yes. Yes. renewed, understanding who we are and why we are. Right? Yes. And understanding where we really, where we are. Yes. And what we're capable of doing. Amen. 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 It, I believe it's, it's an appointed time. I believe it's been designated by the Spirit. I thank Bobby for hearing the Spirit of God, knowing what the Spirit's mind was on it. I had heard it, but I hadn't stepped out on it. I was, I was just laying back on it. And Bobby just stepped right up and said, this is what I think. And I said, I agree. I got the confirmation. But he loves you. Yes. Amen. Amen. He loves us so much more. I mean, coming to the knowledge of that love will equip you for this month. The change and the transformation, the manifestation that we want is rooted in his love. Yes. It all is available because he loves us. Amen. Amen. We sing that song. He loves us. Oh, how he loves us. Right? Yeah. He does. Now, in the revelation of that love, you're going to find yourself. And out of that revelation of finding yourself in his love is the ability to believe all things. Amen. Amen. Whatever he says will be yes. Thank you, Lord. And so be it. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the time that we've had this session, this first session. We give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory. And Father, I speak over everyone here right now in Jesus' name that these things sink into our hearing, Lord, that we have, we have positioned ourselves before you on our face, yes. ears open, and heart ready to believe, Father, that whatever you communicate and bring into our being is acceptable. Yes. And we love you and desire it and give it free course to change, to transform, to bring to life or put to death whatever things that need to live or die. It's all within your power, Lord, your breath, your life, your love. In all things, we yield to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. All right. Take a short break.